Hey everyone, Rudros here. Wanted to talk about a mechanic that is, <laughs> is it near and dear to my heart? I don't know if that's the right words, but it's one I think about a lot and I play a lot, and that is discard as a mechanic. Uh, you know, most commonly associated with ice. Uh, there's a few other elements that dabble in it here and there, but usually it's considered a ice, a ice mechanic or form of attack, whatever you want to call it. So. If, if you've watched my videos at all, maybe you know I have a funny relationship with this card in that I used to hate it. I absolutely used to hate it. Started playing the game around near the end of Opus 7, and back then, discard was so prominent. And my friend Cody had played nothing but Ice Discard, and so I was just, I hated it because it was miserable. And I had to play against it constantly. And there were cards that were banned at the time, Thaumaturge Gesper, because Turbo Ice Discard was just so brutal. You would have these turns. You can go look up some of the old videos on the Square Enix Prevents YouTube channel where you basically can't play the game, which is why a lot of people hated it. Because if they go turn one and they can go Thaumaturge, Argath, Gesper, yeah, I've dumped my whole hand, but I've taken three cards out of your hand. So before you've done anything, you've got two cards in hand you're going to draw two for turn even if you put down a two cp backup you're going to have two left in hand i'm going to take another one out with gesper so that's uh <laughs> was not a very fun time however that was back in opus five six seven we are in opus 18 now getting ready to go on 19 and this card just doesn't feel good it hasn't felt good for quite a while and I kind of just wanted to explore that a little bit, talk about some of the things why it maybe does, doesn't. We have gotten cards that discard still, so it's not a lack of cards that like don't have that text on there. I just don't think it's as effective. Now, for the purposes of this video, I also want to say I will mainly be talking about Mono Ice discard. I have seen some more effective versions of discard with like Ice Earth, uh, maybe, maybe Ice Lightning a little bit, but... I'm really trying to just focus on discard as a mechanic as a whole. Usually that tends to go into ice. So, yeah. So what are what are some of the reasons that it's not as strong as it used to be? Well, well first let me let me say this about the mechanic too. Uh, Steve D said this in one of his recent videos where he was just like, discard is a necessary mechanic. You know, you ha I know it's not fun to play against, but it's a necessary mechanic. Something has to keep the control and the combo decks in check, right? And I fully agree with that. However, my issue with it is I don't think it actually does that, and I think it's less and less effective these days than it ever was before. I debate with my testing partners about this all the time because I play a lot of ice, <laughs> and they hate playing against the discard, and I get it. It does feel unfun. Now, for my money, it's not any less fun than going against Mono Wind or some other late-game control deck that just sits there and combos off and plays Solitaire for 10 minutes. Both both are uninteractive. Both are uninteractive non-games where you don't get to do anything. Uh, and if anything, the discard at least is quicker. So, uh, But I, I understand. I understand it's not fun to play against. It's not fun to, in a game where your resources are limited and you have to pitch cards from hand, that if you're constantly top decking only two every turn, there are turns you literally go draw. Okay, pass. I, I can't do anything. I drew two cards that I don't have the resources to cast because... You froze my backups or they're too expensive or whatever. And yet, in spite of that, Discord doesn't... Or Discord. Discard doesn't really take any tournaments. It's very inconsistent. I pilot it a lot and I can see the inconsistencies. Uh, you know, we got this new Theodore card. And he is a big, hey, dump my hand. And I know my, but my buddy Daniel hates this card. He hates it. He thinks it's just terribly designed. And, you know, I, I've played it against people who just hate playing against it like cool great there goes my whole hand like and i get it i get why that's frustrating and yet at the same time it doesn't seem to do a whole lot or it doesn't it's not it doesn't consistently help you win why is that well with theodore in particular part of it is just the warp taking so long so i've gone against windex windex what discard is supposed to prey upon and by the time Teodor comes in, yes, I've taken their hand away, but they were able to get out three backups, four backups I've even seen. So, yeah, they're in top deck mode, which is like, okay, but I've already got four backups set up, so I will be able to kind of recur a little easier. Uh, and and that, that right there, number one, this is probably one of the reasons discard isn't as strong as it used to be, is that the... 
the the card value is just better, right? That's that's probably the technically correct way to say it is the card value is better, but the more vernacular way to say it is like, well, your top decking is better. Like it doesn't matter if you don't have anything in hand if everything you draw is playable or can give you value back. And I've seen it way too many times where people will, oh, I have nothing in hand. Oh, look at that Drew card that I can absolutely use and does help me stabilize against this board or situation, whatever. And it happens so much more frequently than it used to. And I think that was one of the big reasons it used to be so strong back in the day is that just the cards you could top deck just weren't nearly as strong. They didn't have as much value baked into them uh, to get big payoffs. They tended to be a lot more expensive. So if, if you had to play this five costs to get value, <laughs> you only had a single backup. It was, it was, you know, or you didn't have no backups. Your backup was frozen or whatever the situation was. Yeah. You couldn't play it. You couldn't actually cast that card from hand. Whereas nowadays cards are so much cheaper. I mean, there's so many more two costs. It's just way easier to do it. So that's an inherent obvious reason is that when cards are more valuable, when you can just draw two cards and it's playable and it can help you change the board state, then that's awesome. Uh, well, it's awesome for that player. It sucks for the person trying to discard you and keep your hand down. And I have felt that in many of my discard games where I've, I've said out loud to myself, I mean, I can't, I can't get you any lower than zero. Like the most I can put your hand at is zero. So if on zero cards, you can still rip out an answer. Okay, well, I, I can't do anything else. I have to get you to zero. So speaking of that, I wanted to touch on that as well. Is there something else I think discards lacking in that I think it lacks payoffs for you being on zero cards in hand. So looking through the card database, I believe there's currently only four cards that technically give you a reward if your opponent has no cards in hand. The first is an oldie and a goodie. Sid Alstein, you know, when he enters the field, you just choose a forward. If they have no cards in hand, you break it. And back in the day, he was just, again, when it was harder to top deck answers, he was, uh, I liked Steve's wording of him that he was a self-fulfilling prophecy. So not only did I just take the biggest threat off of your board and left this big body behind, you don't have any cards in hand. So how could you possibly answer this? Well, a lot easier nowadays. He's very difficult to resolve off of an EX burst because just very randomly on their turn when they're attacking are they going to have zero uh going in with him is yotsu it's basically the same card with a weaker body for some reason technically this one is always better on a burst because if they still have a card in hand it will at least make them discard however unlike the allstein dice amaterasu which i guess doesn't really matter because why would you play it if their hand isn't empty but anyway so here's one of the other ones you know it kills a Kills a forward, and then uh, and next we have Faisalis. This is probably the best one, and what makes this one so good is that it's not it's not limited to its on entry effect. It also happens when Faisalis will attack. So as long as they have zero in hand, she gets you double. She gets to take something out on their board. By take it out, I mean dole it and freeze it, and you get to draw a card. Now, if they have anything above zero, if they've got one to three, you only get one of those effects, and if they have above that, they've got, <laughs> you get none of them. And I experienced that last week. And this is kind of why I'm talking about it now. Cause I, I went through a bunch of matches with these last week. So I did the Teodor play. Teodor empties their hand and I followed up with Faisalis, which is great. Right? So now they've got no hand. I don't want freeze. I draw. Well, I did. I didn't have a continued source of discard on the board. And I'll get to that in a moment. You know, I didn't have orphan yet. I didn't have Unaleska. So because of that, my opponent actually just took the chance and, well, one, they couldn't play anything that first turn anyway and just said, okay, well, I'll just wait. And I wasn't able to discard their anything else from their hand. And they legit got back up to four or five cards in hand. And now Faisalis doesn't do anything. Maybe, maybe this card was fair when it was printed in Opus 13, but especially nowadays, like the fact that it can just have no effect at all if their hand is too high and sometimes the discard plan doesn't work out where you weren't able to get their hand low anyway. You know, if you didn't see it or whatever else. And yeah, you've got this card that just, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, she obviously has a lot of value if you can get them to zero. But, uh, you know, it can be difficult to maintain them. There are some games it's easy. It just depends on how you see your cards, of course. But uh, the final other payoff and maybe arguably the worst one is Lightning. This is just such a weird card I've talked about before. So if there's zero, she's only one, which is great. But then she wants your hand to be low to have the haste, which is strange. And then both your hands have to be empty to deal a point of damage, which is just 
baffling uh, and just feels so weak compared to other direct damage sources we've gotten in the past and we're probably getting in the future. Uh, if she didn't have to hit your own hand, I would like this card way better. But, you know, okay, so this is about it. It's about these four that say, hey, this is the payoff when their hand is empty. And I think discard, if, if they want that to be a mechanic, and I'm assuming they do because they continue to print cards that have discard a card on their text, you know, we, we can see right here, a bunch of new cards that had that, an Opus 18, Opus 17, 16. So I'm assuming they do want that to be a mechanic, but we need uh, a payoff for it. And the, another reason we need a payoff for them having no cards in hand is because if they can play cards, a lot of times what players will do, and you'll know this if you've played discard matches, is they'll just play their hand out, right? Well, I'm not going to give you the ability to just rip cards out of my hand and get your value from Vice or Biblos or Where I, all these cards that say, hey, when you discard, I get an additional trigger of something. They'll say, well, I'm going to deny you that. I'll just play your hand out. And that's been kind of the case since Opus 15, 16, where Where I came out. It was like, okay, well, I'll just play my hand out. Yeah, I don't have anything, but I wasn't going to have anything anyway. And this way, you don't get the value off it, which is why, okay, well, then we need more things to punish them or to help when their hand is empty. So now what form would that take? I don't know if I necessarily want it to be removal. Maybe the removal would be better if it wasn't so expensive. Uh, so there is, what is his name? There's that ice monster. Uh, this guy, Y-A-K-T. So he, he, he is a bit of a form of payoff. If they have one or less, uh, when he enters, he breaks them instead of dull freezing. He'll always dull freeze. And now, does he see a ton of play? No, not really. I actually kind of like the card, but is it a price thing? Is it, this is too expensive for, for a non-body? You know, yeah, he's got the other, but this, this doesn't block for you. It doesn't deal damage. Whereas... All, all these cards I mentioned, they're forwards, right? So not only are they giving you that value from their entry effect or their attack effect, they are helping you win the game. They have to attack in to win the game. Whereas this monster doesn't do that. Again, are these just too expensive? 5 CP just to break something. I mean, that is above the rate. They consider the rate to be 4 CP for a straight break. So why is it 5 and it has to be when their hand is low? Like, that just seems too conditional so maybe all this stuff is too expensive obviously other than the lightning and then you got to dump your own hand uh so yeah i would like to just see another payoff for hey when your hand is empty do such and such now what form should that take should it be removal like these i don't know maybe if it's cheaper otherwise maybe it's something that refills your own hand like physalis like you get to draw maybe it should just be more dull freeze really lock them out make it a hey you know, I'm going to lock out your backups too. And I get that on one hand, Hobby Japan's probably afraid of that. They don't want you to get into this state with ice and discard where it's like, you cannot win the game. I have locked you out of everything. But at the same time, I think about that <laughs> and people probably hate me for saying this. Would that be a bad thing? Is that any different than wind getting fully set up or ice wind getting fully set up? And then Ice Wind Dull Freezes six things on your board and makes you dump your hand. They have locked you out of the game. That's it. And they usually do it with the card lock. That's allowed. That's legal. All those cards are not banned. Why, why is that okay? So that's okay, but this wouldn't be okay to... Why, why can't discard get to a state where it says, Hey, I've ripped all the cards on your hand. I've frozen your backups. I've locked you out. Now, granted... I don't know if that's really even possible today with how some of the game works. So maybe Ice needs a boss monster. I don't quite think it's Vysalis that says, hey, you know, something like X-Death. At the end of their turn, if their hand is empty or at the end of their turn when such and such do something big. You know, X-Death slowly chips away at their board. Bismarck is wins big boss monster. It gives the win player value and it takes something out on their board. I would love to see another payoff for that for the discard. So... It's appropriate. Uh, another thing too, though, is to keep their hand empty because top deck's so good, we need continuous discard. And as far as I can tell, there's only two forms of viable continuous discard. First being the best one, which is Orphan here. Fantastic card that once per turn, you're going to keep attacking their hand. As I've said, I'll have matches where if I don't see the Orphan or I don't see the other card I'm gonna mention is here, Unaleska, I can't actually keep attacking their hand. And if I can't keep attacking their hand, they can rebuild up and then once they build up again a lot of these other cards just become dead weight in my hands and they become ineffective so orphans the best do we need another form of it 
maybe uh, we might if we need <laughs> another you know last well is kind of a form of it he has to attack and then of course obviously he still has to be alive and be on the field so he's kind of a form of it but so he's, he could kind of be up here too but orphan is more like on demand you don't actually have to attack them you just move into the attack phase unalaska too unalaska is very effective especially in those earth decks with weiss and biblos and you can keep triggering these so are these two enough? I wouldn't mind seeing at least one more, one more just passive effect, whether it's at the start of attack phase or you paid, you know, CP, whatever it is, uh, just to help. Again, if that's going to be a strategy and a viable strategy, if you hate discard period, whatever, okay, I get it. But if they want it to be a viable strategy, and I think it should be, okay, well, I need to be able to continuously do that. You know, uh, Steve had said in one of his videos too, I think the days of like a forward just coming in and taking a card are kind of over. I do agree with that. Like I can't, I don't think Argath is really worth it anymore to play Argath. Hey, I'm going to take a single card from your hand and then that's all he does. And then he just sits there. So yeah, that definitely we, it doesn't hurt to have continued forms of discard. Now, I'm sure they don't want to overload that. They don't want you to have Orphan and Unalesca and then whatever the new, but, but then I have to ask too, wouldn't that really matter? Because again, the, the discard matches always just tend to go one of two ways, which is either your opponent is going to just play whatever they can out and you're not going to discard anything anyway, in which case these cards technically aren't even getting you value at that point. Or I don't know. So I'll, 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 I'll leave it at that. that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind at least one more form of, like, continued value for discard. And before I move on, I know there is Scale Toad as well. You know, he's a very popular... He, he's technically... He, he's just a bit strange, though, because he happens on your opponent's turn, and he only happens if they have more than... If they have two or more cards in hand, so it is easy to dodge the Scale Toad. I know there's good combos, again, with, like, Scale Toad and Unaleska. Scale Toad forces him down to one. Unaleska's gonna rip the last one out. Uh, so he is tech, I don't know, he just doesn't feel the same, and if anyone else feels that way, maybe you can articulate better why, is it because it's not on a body, is it because it's not continued use, I think it's just because your opponent can kind of play around it a little more, and invalidate it, or, I don't know, but yeah, technically he is another form of, like, continual discard every turn, so, uh, another reason why discard I think is weaker than it has been, is EX Burst, and if you've seen my channel, you know I have a big video on EX Burst, but cards like Physalis or Lightning really play into this. Uh, Physalis especially, that to continue to get a value off of Physalis, you have to commit an attack, right? So if they have no cards in hand and an empty board or whatever, got to commit an attack because to get your if you want your Physalis to get its value. Uh, so this happened last week when I was playing in RVA, and I was playing Theodore, and my opponent was playing Fire, and I swing it with the Theodore... And hit they hit a uh, Tifa into damage. The backup Tifa six cost is nine thousand, so they just kill my Theodore for free, even though he has no hand. And you know what? What can you do about that? Absolutely nothing. You, okay, cool. That was my beater. You know it, it, what I had drawn that match. That's what I had. I had like Theodore and like Charlotte, maybe maybe last. I don't remember, but some other very very weak forward. So he took out the thing that was allowing me to apply pressure completely for free, or. One of my most infamous examples where I got his hand to zero with Orphan, with Argath. I was back when I was still playing him. This might have been a set or two ago. He has three backups, and he had an empty hand. I was like, okay, cool. Uh, and again, I wasn't even I wasn't even intending to go aggressive that game. I just hadn't drawn any backups, so I was forced to go aggressive. I was like, okay, well, I got to end this game quick. He's playing Earth. You know, he's going to... And I hit Star Sibyl into damage, which let him go get Shantoto... And he, of course, he had exactly enough backups to play it. The game was just over at that point. And uh, so maybe if you're playing more control -y ice, you can be more patient if you're playing like the ice earth variant. But if you're trying to play turbo aggressive discard, which at least currently, I think that's the only way it works. I don't think discard works at all if you give them five, six turns to set up a board and then you start trying to go after their hand. I've played it too much to know that that doesn't work. You have to be hitting their hand as soon as you can. If that's your game plan, that's what it relies on. So, you know, I won't go into a huge rant on the experts here, but just it's it's free, it's free value that punishes you for trying to win the game. So that also in that same match, oh, I killed your Theodore for free. Or, oh, here's Belias. Uh, I'll draw a card for free, or here's a searcher, I'll search out a card for free. And so when you're trying to keep their hand down, and it's really bad too when it hits before your Physalis can swing, 
Uh, usually that's why I always try to swing with her first. But, and then it's like, oh, okay, well now you have, I thought you were going to have zero in hand, and actually now you have one. So, uh, anything that's just going to give them free value, that is hard to overcome, right? There's also a lot more cards now like Fat Chocobo and Tenzin and Lakshmi that just draw you cards for free at the end of the turn. And I had to deal with that too. This person was playing Samurais, had Tenzin, and it's just like, well, I mean, even if I discard, you automatically draw one back at the end of your turn, which again, I can try to keep the pressure on if I can see the orphan or not. But so just overall, there's way more value. And EX bursts, of course, are always going to be free value. So it's very, very difficult to just keep someone's hand empty and to keep that oppression on, keep that foot on the throat and just keep them down. Impossible? No, not at all. There are still games where it has worked. And that's, I'm sure that's what people who hate discard would say. And I'm sure that's what Square Enix would say as well. Is, uh, well, you know, when it does work, it's, you know, there have been games with the Theodore where I'll say, we'll just pull up Theodore really quick here. You know, there have been games with Theodore where the Theodore does, does go off successfully and they draw poorly. They can't draw, they draw something they can't actually use. And I have Orphan or Unaleska to keep dumping their hand out and they don't play the game. And so if you've been on the receiving end of that kind of game, I'm sure you're thinking of that going, well, no, I hate discard. Like, that's no fun. I don't get to play the game. I don't want to see this thing get even stronger. But I also don't know. I'll pose this question. Is that a strategy? Is hoping your opponent doesn't draw well? Is that a strategy? I mean, of course, you, you hope that for every game, right? You want that for every game so you can win. But if that's how you win is like, all right, as long as they don't draw cards that they need, I might have a chance. I don't know. doesn't feel like a strategy. So anyway, I'll wrap up here. But I, I want to see all elements viable. I want to see all mechanics viable. You know, discard, mill, late game control, aggro, tempo. I think everything should be viable in its own space. And just right now, discard just feels inherently inconsistent. Uh, if there's any part of it I have missed, please feel free to let me know. Say, so actually, here's another part of it that just is why it's kind of wonky and why it's kind of hit or miss whether it it works or not so uh let me know obviously ice summons also suck we know that so that doesn't help either that ice doesn't have any good summons to follow up but yeah there you go anyway that's all i got for discard maybe i'll come back with some of the mechanics in the future and until next time take care